Hello students. Uh, in this video, we will study physiology of selective reabsorption and secretion. Now, as we all know, there are three main steps in the formation of urine, namely glomerular filtration, selective reabsorption and secretion. Look at this diagram showing the structure of nephron. Now, this structure shows the renal carpacil. Now, this re renal carpacil, it acts like a filtration unit and it is responsible for the filtration of blood. So, the first step in the formation of urine is the filtration of blood by the renal carpacil. Now, a renal carpacil is composed of glomerulus, a tuft of capillaries and a Bowman's capsule. Now, uh, the renal artery branches uh, to produce the afferent arterioles and these afferent arterioles, they carry the blood to the glomerulus. Now, components of blood like water, electrolytes like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, nitrogenous waste products like urea, uric acid, etc. are filtered are filtered through the renal carpacil and the filtrate passes into the tubular lumen. Now, uh, the non-filtrable substances in the blood like uh, blood cells, uh, then uh, protein like albumin, uh, which are not filtered, they are carried away from the glomerulus by the efferent arteriole. And these efferent arteriole, they further branches to produce the peritubular capillaries. And these peritubular capillaries, they run parallel to and they surround the entire nephron. Now, around 180 liter of the filtrate is produced daily by both the kidneys. Very important to note that a huge quantity of filtrate is produced daily by the kidneys. Now, this filtrate is composed of waste substances like urea and uric acid along with essential substances the body require like glucose, amino acid, essential ions, proteins and uh, small proteins and large volume of water. So, all the required substances along with the water is reabsorbed from the filtrate into the renal epithelial cells and from the renal epithelial cells all the required substances they pass into the peritubular capillaries and thus in this way all the important required substances from the filtrate they pass into the circulation. Now this process is called as the selective reabsorption. So selective reabsorption is the reabsorption of water, electrolytes, and solutes from the tubular lumen into the peritubular capillaries. That is the substances are absorbed or they are reabsorbed in the circulation. Now third step in the formation of the urine is secretion. Now substances which are not required by the body but which could not be filtered through the glomerulus are transported from the blood into the afferent arteriole, they reach the peritubular capillaries. Now, drugs like uh, aspirin, penicillin, uh, so these substances, they are not filtered and therefore they pass into the peritubular capillaries. And from the peritubular capillaries, these substances, they are secreted into the tubular lumen. That means they are um, excreted into the tubular lumen. And uh, then uh, uh, ions like uh, hydrogen ions, they are also secreted and these hydrogen ions are essential for the maintenance of normal blood pH and apart from this uh, ions like ammonia, uh, ammonium ions are also secreted. So once these substances are secreted into the, uh, into the filtrate, into the tubular lumen, they become a part of the urine and they are excreted from the body. Now, as shown in the diagram, uh, this nephron is made up of four main different parts. The first part of the nephron is the proximal convoluted tubule. Second part of the nephron is the loop of Henle. This is the loop of Henle. Then the third part of the nephron is the distal convoluted tubule. And the last part of the nephron is the, dis is the collecting duct. Now, loop of Henle is further described as a thin descending limb of loop of Henle. Then the thin ascending limb of loop of Henle and then the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Now, reabsorption and secretion occur in uh, different parts of the renal tubule. Now, let's study uh, this uh, secretion and reabsorption in different parts of the uh, tubular lumen. Uh, now, let's understand uh, the reabsorption and secretion uh, in the first part of uh, renal tubule, that is in the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, a majority of reabsorption, uh, 
uh, all these substances are reabsorbed uh, in the renal epithelial cells and from there they move to the peritubular capillaries and are returned to the circulation. So majority of reabsorption occurs in the proximal convoluted tubule. About 65 to 70% of water, sodium and potassium uh, in the filtrate and apart from this 100% of the glucose amino acid uh, vitamins in the filtrate they are reabsorbed uh, in the proximal convoluted tubule. Uh, from the filtrate these substances they move to the renal epithelial cells and from the renal epithelial cells these substances they are carried to the peritubular capillaries and finally return to the circulation. Now, sodium is reabsorbed through the sodium hydrogen antiporter. So, this is a green color sodium hydrogen antiporter. Now, this clearly shows that the sodium is reabsorbed in the peritubular capillaries, whereas hydrogen ions, uh, they are secreted or they are excreted into the lumen. Now, apart from this, 50% uh, around 50% of the chloride and variable quantities of calcium, magnesium, hydrogen, phosphate are also reabsorbed, are also reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries from the lumen of proximal convoluted tubule. Now, absorption of uh, absorption of bicarbonate is catalyzed by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. And reabsorption of bicarbonate is essential for the maintenance of acid-base balance. Reabsorption of uh, solutes uh, from the proximal convoluted tubule to the tubular epithelial cells creates an osmotic gradient. And this osmotic gradient is responsible for the reabsorption of water into the peritubular capillaries. So, this is about the reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, apart from this, ammonium ions, hydrogen ions and certain drugs, they are also secreted into the, uh, into the lumen and uh, uh, they are secreted from the peritubular capillaries into the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, next part of the tubule is the loop of Henle. Now, descending loop of, loop of Henle and ascending limb of loop of Henle. Uh, these portions of loop of Henle are highly specialized to reabsorb water and uh, sodium respectively. Now, thin descending uh, loop of Henle is highly permeable to water. There is unrestricted movement of water from uh, this part of the loop of Henle and around 15% of water entering the nephron is reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries from the descending thin uh, limb of loop of Henle and uh, this is accomplished by the process of uh, osmosis. Now as shown in here in the diagram urea freely diffuses uh, into the lumen of descending uh, limb of loop of Henle. Now, a uh, very important ion, sodium. Sodium is reabsorbed in the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Now, thick ascending limb of uh, loop of Henle is impermeable to water. But here, sodium is reabsorbed. Sodium is reabsorbed by sodium, potassium, 2-chloride co-transporter. So, this uh, co-transporter is the uh, sodium, potassium, 2-chloride co-transporter. Now, around 25% of sodium and 25% of potassium and chloride ions are reabsorbed actively into the luminal epithelial cells and from the luminal epithelial cells, uh, these substances, they move to the peritubular capillaries and are returned to the bloodstream. Now, apart from uh, sodium, potassium and chloride, calcium and magnesium are reabsorbed, uh, are reabsorbed through the uh, intracellular spaces uh, present between the epithelial cells. So, these substances are also returned to the peritubular capillaries. So, uh, we can say finally that majority of solutes uh, filtered by the glomerulus have been recovered, have been reabsorbed. Uh, along with majority of water around 80 to 85 uh, percent in this uh, limb of loop of Henle. Now uh, let's uh, talk about the 
now this is a distal convoluted tubule so let's uh, talk about the reabsorption in the distal convoluted tubule now for the purpose of convenience and for the easy understanding uh, this distal convoluted tubule is divided into two parts so this portion is the early distal convoluted tubule whereas uh, this part uh, this part is a late distal convoluted tubule so around 20 to 25 uh, liters of filtrate uh, reaches the early distal a convoluted tubule and this filtrate contains around 20% of original water and 10% of the sodium. Now uh, out of this filtrate around about 5% of sodium is reabsorbed uh, into the peritubular capillaries from the early distal convoluted tubule. Now reabsorption of sodium is mediated uh, through the sodium chloride symport and around 8% of water is also reabsorbed in the peritubular capillaries and apart from this uh, there is also reabsorption of calcium and magnesium. Uh, now let's uh, see to the reabsorption and uh, secretion in the late distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct that is the last part of the tubular lumen. Now very important to remember that uh, aldosterone regulates reabsorption of sodium and aldosterone uh, gives directions for the synthesis of uh, sodium channels and also for the synthesis of sodium potassium ATPase pump. Now sodium is reabsorbed uh, from the filtrate. Uh, into the luminal epithelial cells through the sodium channels and this reabsorbed sodium is pumped into the circulation that is into the peritubular capillaries while potassium ions are secreted into the lumen and this exchange of sodium and potassium is mediated by the sodium potassium ATPase pump. So this is how sodium is absorbed and potassium is uh, excreted or secreted and this absorption of sodium and secretion of potassium uh, is regulated by the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Now apart from this reabsorption of sodium is also mediated by sodium hydrogen ATPase pump. So this pump mediates reabsorption of sodium and secretion of hydrogen ions in the lumen and these secretion of these hydrogen ions in the lumen regulates pH of the blood. So this is how 3% uh, three, uh, 3 of uh, sodium is reabsorbed in the late distal convoluted tubule. Now apart from the reabsorption of sodium and uh, uh, apart from the reabsorption of sodium and secretion of uh, uh, potassium and hydrogen, uh, uh, this, this reabsorption of water is uh, strictly uh, regulated by uh, antidiuretic hormone. Now this antidiuretic hormone or ADH, it inserts aquaporine channels or the water channels uh, for the reabsorption of water. So this is how all the substances, uh, all the required substances and water is reabsorbed uh, while not required substances are secreted and only uh, 1 to 1.5 liter of urine is produced daily by both the kidneys. So this is in brief on the selective reabsorption and secretion. Uh, if you find the video useful kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.